Can you hear me? Hello, we shall, we shall give a talk with Anna Zinina. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Is the audio okay? Hello. No. No, Hello. Hello, is is the audio okay? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, okay perfect. Uh, welcome everyone. Um, I am Luis Parra. I, I will be the chairman in this session. Um, we will start with the talk uh, with learning a foreign language vocabulary with a companion robot uh, with Anna Sinina and Artemi Koto, uh, you have 15 minutes to present and five minutes uh, for questions from the, from the people, from the public. So are you ready to start? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, perfect. So welcome, um, and let's start. Okay. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Zina Anna, and today my colleague Artemi Kotov and I will present our research. Uh, I would like to start by saying a few words uh, about our laboratory at the Khrushchev Institute. We are developing an anthropomorphic robot F2 for human-machine interaction experiments. Uh, the kinematic scheme of the robot allows uh, reproducing human emotional movements. A uh, robot has a moving hand and a head with a mentor for face projection. It is designed as a simple and reproducible research and educational platform. Uh, so now uh, let's go to the topic of our presentation. Uh, today, such robots uh, find application in various situations. Uh, we find it interesting that uh, social robots are widely used in education, in particular in learning a foreign language. Uh, even more, uh, today we can say that there is a new and rapidly developing field in science, uh, robot-assisted language uh, learned, uh, or RAL. And it is already known, uh, you can see uh, it on, um, on the picture from this uh, uh, article, uh, that uh, RAL has shown uh, positive uh, effects on language learning. Mm, and also, it should be noted that uh, this area is represented predominantly by foreign research. Uh, Russian researchers have not conducted uh, uh, such experiments. Uh, so, uh, we decided uh, to do it, and um, uh, we conducted an experiment uh, in which uh, the robot acted uh, as an assistant in uh, learning the vocabulary of foreign language. Uh, we assume that uh, personal interaction between a human and a robot could uh, facilitate the student's engagement uh, and the satisfaction with learning processes compared to the more traditional needs, uh, a computer program with a screen interface. Uh, the experiment was conducted uh, in spring uh, uh, 2022 at the Moscow State Linguistic University. Uh, subjects were students. Uh, on average, the experimental procedure was uh, 20 minutes. Um, at the beginning of the experiment, uh, the person uh, sat in front of the robot or their computer. The experimental uh, introduced the procedure uh, of the experiment and uh, left the room. Uh, the slide shows a schematic illustration on the experiment uh, with the robot. And uh, you can see uh, two uh, stages, uh, word uh, presentation and the word training. Uh, at the beginning of the experiment, uh, the subjects uh, were presented with their studied words. Uh, they saw uh, the word uh, and its uh, translation on the monitor mm, uh, and uh, he hear its pronunciation in uh, the Latin language. Uh, in addition, uh, a hint, um, a special keyword, uh, was presented to the person uh, by the robot. Uh, after that, uh, in the second stage, uh, the subjects, uh, uh, subject was 
presented uh, in the um, word in Russian by the robot. Uh, if the person didn't remember uh, the word, uh, the robot gave them a hint, and uh, if uh, the subjects didn't answer again, uh, the robot started recording the pronunciation of the word by a Latin speaker. Uh, all the hints, keyword, and uh, Latin reading were presented in six, uh, six uh, five-second intervals. Uh, words uh, were presented twice. Uh, subjects' uh, uh, answers were controlled by experimental, uh, so uh, we uh, used the wizard of Oz paradigm. Uh, after learning, uh, the subjects was invited to the next room, uh, where the experimental check the words uh, learned in was experimental condition. Uh, we choose oral form of verification uh, because uh, uh, it corresponded to the oral form of responses in the experiment. Uh, we uh, use uh, within uh, the subject experimental design. Uh, it means that uh, each participant uh, was uh, practicing Latin words with the robot and uh, with the computer. And uh, now uh, you can see in more detail um, uh, presentation of the second stage, uh, word training with the robot. And now um, I'll show you a brief version of word learning with the robot. Uh, there is translation. Сейчас мы познакомимся с латинскими словами. Кунабол. Как парабола. Арборис. Как барбарин. Хорошо. Теперь пробуй назвать латинские слова, а я буду тебе помогать. Дерево. Как барбарис? Арборис. Ага. Колыбель. Как парабола. And uh, uh, in this slide presents the theme of the second stage uh, of the experiment, but uh, without uh, the robot, um, with uh, the computer. And now I also present you a brief version of the experiment. Kumbabu. Arboris. Arboris. For the experiment, we used uh, keywords uh, as hints. Uh, we chose 26 Latin words uh, with low frequency in Russian. Uh, we used phonetic hints uh, suggested by uh, 42 native Russian speakers. Uh, suggested hints were semantically unrelated uh, to the Latin words. Uh, so for each Latin word, the most frequent Russian keyword uh, had been chosen and then pronounced by a Latin specialist and recorded. Uh, the words were randomly divided into two groups uh, for each of experimental conditions. Uh, in the table, uh, you can see uh, examples of Latin uh, words, uh, their translation, and uh, keywords. Um, so, uh, let's move to the results. And uh, according to the results, uh, subjects were uh, equally successful in uh, learning Latin words in two experimental conditions. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, each uh, word was presented twice, and uh, based uh, on the data, we can also observe how uh, words were learned, uh, the number of um, wrong, uh, wrong uh, answers uh, decreases, 
and uh, the number of uh, uh, right answers increases. And uh, uh, for us, um, it was very important to, to evaluate the attractiveness of uh, new methods uh, of word learning uh, compared to a well-known way. And uh, according to the results, uh, about 60% uh, of entire sample indicate that uh, they preferred learning words with the robot. And the differences in preferences are statistically significant. Um, yeah, after the experiment, um, the subjects, uh, subjects uh, filled out a questionnaire in which uh, they evaluated their impression of foreign, foreign language learning. Uh, for this purpose, we used uh, semantic differential scales. And uh, uh, according to these scales, so the participants uh, described the robot compared to the computer as rather friendly, cheerful, emotional, uh, responsive, and attractive. And uh, the computer is rather apathetic and um, quick. Um, we we uh, also evaluated uh, user uh, satisfaction from the interaction with the robot. Uh, for this purpose, uh, we uh, use the modified uh, satisfaction questionnaire. And according to this questionnaire, there are uh, four um, satisfaction factors. Uh, this is uh, efficiency, uh, ease of use, uh, usefulness, and emotional attractiveness. And um, um, according to the results, um, such factor as emotional attractiveness uh, uh, in this uh, graph and uh, uh, usefulness in this graph um, uh, of the robot correlate with the preference uh, of for one or another way of interaction. Um, Um, analyzing the data, uh, we found that uh, subjects uh, show a rich emotional expression when interacting with the robot. Uh, they ask questions, ask for hints, uh, say that uh, they do not nothing, uh, they do not nothing, and they do not uh, um, know correct answers. Uh, we also found that. Uh, um, uh, the robot received more smiles than computer. And uh, now um, I will show you two examples. Uh, in these examples, um, um, response uh, and smiles when the uh, answer is incorrect. Pause. <laughs> A very rich emotional expression. Um. And uh, another example. Uh, we'll see smiles from respondent, respondent when the answer is correct. Uh, it is very interesting uh, these subjects do not show similar behavior uh, when learning words with them computer. Um, uh, the subject tends to positively uh, perceive uh, the robot as a learning assistant. Uh, even those subjects uh, who uh, prefer the learning words with the computer prefer learning words uh, with the computer, uh, noted that personal interaction with the robot could be effective for learning a uh, foreign language. Uh, we asked the following question. Uh, can personal communication with the robot be effective for learning a uh, foreign language? And uh, 37 subjects said yes. And um, uh, here, uh, here you can um, see um, uh, three different groups of subjects depending on the role um, of the robot in the educational situation. Uh, first, uh, uh, we can um, um, differentiate uh, those subjects who confidently perceive the robot as a teacher. And uh, secondly, uh, the subjects may focus on the robot's um, creation of more comfortable environment for learning and supporting a pleasant and friendly atmosphere. And uh, certainly there are subjects uh, for whom 
uh, the support uh, of the robots is significant. Uh, they also not uh, increased the motivation uh, to learn the language when uh, interacting with the robot. And um, uh, there, uh, despite the positive uh, uh, responses, uh, uh, there was a group of subjects that liked uh, that liked uh, this interaction less and preferred their computer. And uh, such subjects were divided uh, into subgroups. First, um, some subjects noted that uh, the methods of hinting through keywords didn't suit them. And uh, secondly, um, uh, some subjects um, found it difficult to, to um, concentrate on learning words with the robot. And uh, um, our conclusions, um, uh, according to the results, uh, um, the robot uh, um, um, the robot has a good uh, perspective uh, to be used as an assistant in learning a foreign language vocabulary. And uh, the robot gives a positive impression and increases motivation uh, and the desire to use this method of learning in the future. Uh, students highly evaluate the flexibility of the robot in this. And uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, this is our lab. And, um, our website where you can read more about our work and uh, uh, about uh, after robot there is after you got okay thank you so much for a very interesting presentation so we can start with the question from the from the people chat yeah. Hi, um, I, I was wondering here that uh, it will be possible to have uh, in the computer uh, a face like just you have in the robot, but without the rest of the robot. Uh, do you think, do you thought about having this intermediary uh, kind of, of uh, experimentation where you have not just a, a, a computer without anything, but a computer with a face, for example, that could give the same kind of impression that the robot yeah. gives, but without the robot uh, apparatus. Uh, it was our first uh, research, and uh, we decided to compare uh, robot and uh, computer. Uh, maybe uh, later uh, we will compare a uh, robot and uh, um, face something with face interface. Uh, I would say that it is important for us that uh, a robot uh, gives an impression of a, of a presence of some some entity, some guy in the room. And in fact, you can uh, you can walk around the room and uh, listen to what the robot says and answer to the robot. Uh, but it is difficult to compare that in the experiment because in the experiment, uh, subjects had to sit in front of the monitor or in front of the robot. But uh, in an actual situation, it is possible just to. Uh, to do what you, you what you usually do in the evening, uh, and the robot just uh, is training um, the words orally with you. Uh, but you are connected because you feel the robot, the presence of the robot. So this is important, and uh, that's that's a question: how to organize the experiments you are talking about? Yeah, I, I'm thinking about having the same presence of an agent, but uh, an embedded agent inside the computer and not uh, in, in the real world like a robot. It would be interesting to have a comparison between two, uh, uh, let's say, characters, uh, the character in the robot and the character in the computer. And then maybe you can have a better uh, uh, understanding of, of what is the difference of having a full robot and having uh, a character inside the computer, and, and maybe this could be an interesting experiment for the future. Maybe, thank you. Thank okay. uh, you. Someone, someone want to ask another question? Thank you. 
No questions? Thanks a lot. Okay, so, so uh, we thank you for your presentation and, and we conclude we conclude, conclude this this block. Uh, so thank you very much and have a nice day. Nice day. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye.